I know I'm a little late to the party with this one, as the whole controversy behind IGN and the Dead Cells plagiarism scandal has now come and gone. But just in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link to a video below that will get you all caught up. Now, the integrity of video game journalism. It has been a topic that has been surrounded in controversy for many years, dating back to the inception of the industry. As a kid, I used to love reading gaming magazines. That was the main source of my video game news. Big shout out to GamePro, Electronic Gaming Monthly, Nintendo Power, and GMR. Getting to read about and squint at small screenshots of upcoming titles and reviews for newly released games every month made me excited to check the mail. But this infancy of video game journalism started a problem that is still seen today. Lots of these magazines and later gaming websites would sometimes get the exclusive first look or review of a game. Nowhere was it explicitly stated that the developer paid for this exclusive coverage or better yet promised to praise a game regardless of its actual quality, but it was quite easy to read between the lines. Plenty of coverage and good word of mouth generates buzz and hopefully revenue for game makers. Controversy and scandals arose over the years with the most infamous being the firing of Jeff Gernstein from GameSpot for his negative review of Kane and Lynch 2 which caused the developer to pull advertising from the site. And this is all before the morals and integrity of editorial staff and review scoring systems made it to the spotlight. Now, with this recent case of Philip Mewson's plagiarism at IGN, the already fractured trust of the gaming community was dealt with another blow. There is a positive in all this, and that is the way this was all handled. I do have to applaud IGN. Sure, we don't really know if they had any knowledge of Philip's actions, but I find it extremely hard to believe that the biggest gaming site on the planet will get away with plagiarizing something on purpose. By acting swiftly, firing Mewson, and apologizing for the occurrence, they made the most out of a terrible situation. Mewson, on the other hand, has not handled the situation well, making excuses and not being sincere in his so-called apology. I do hope he sees the errors of his ways and becomes a better person, as I don't wish him any ill will. I am a firm believer in second chances. He can redeem himself, but only if he accepts the wrong path he was following before. Now back to the point, the integrity of video game journalism. Conflicts of interest in media will always create gray areas that make people cautious of what they consume. In a world where everybody is trying to make the biggest returns on investment, it's easy to fear that everybody has a not-so-secret agenda. In a perfect world, there would be 100% transparency, but even though steps have been put into place to work towards that, nothing is guaranteed. Large publications and even small YouTubers have the responsibility to state when videos are sponsored or a reviewed game was given to them for free. And as much as people can state they are being 100% honest with no bias, the truth is we are human and influenced by everything around us. I'm not stating that everybody in the industry can't be trusted. Far from it. I'm just saying that we should take what we read and see with a grain of salt. In the end, you the viewer slash reader has to be the judge. Even for a small YouTuber like myself, the best thing you can do is to get information and opinions from a number of sources. No need to be fearful that everybody is out to get you, but we should always do our part to ensure we question and make informed decisions on what we believe online. This goes well past video game journalism and creeps into anything you read or view in your everyday life. All in all, I have faith that video game journalism can overcome the many barriers and obstacles crafted by greed and a handful of bad apples. This was 8-Bit to the Future. Let me know what your thoughts are on video game journalism below, and please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, game on.